For some, college life is never easy, and this is proven true in Master, an Amazon original written and directed by Mariama Diallo in her feature film debut. I hope I pronounced her name right. This stars Regina Hall, Zoe Renee, Amber Gray, and has a few other supporting cast members surrounding the story taking place at a Northeastern University where Jasmine Moore, played by Zoe Renee, is a freshman, and she's all happy to be there. Wanting to see if she can succeed since she was an honor roll member in Tacoma, Washington, and she's just so excited to continue her education. And she suddenly becomes the victim of racist attacks. And <clears throat> Regina Hall's character, Gail Bishop, the new master of this uh, particular boarding house, and a couple other characters are trying to figure out what is going on. Like, is this supernatural? Like, are her roommates attacking her? What is going on? Are there faculty members? What is, you know, behind these various racist attacks? What is going on? Is there some seedy underworld that, you know, this Northeastern University has been trying to keep down for years? What exactly is happening? We find out as the movie goes on. So, when I saw that this movie was dropping, I was like, okay, Regina Hall's been very good and stuff. Zoe Renee hadn't necessarily heard of her, and I'll talk about her performance here, but... Okay, you know, Amber Gray, that's a, you know, good one-two punch right there. Let's see what they can do. There were some good moments to this movie, and the story at times does, you know, like, kind of peel back, like how racism is still very, very unfortunately relevant at many universities. People of color had to fight and fight and claw and work ten times harder just to get, you know, even a fraction of the distance that various white people do, <laughs> and that is something that this movie does well. Um, director Mariama, she does, you know, a good job focusing on that. The one thing about this movie, though, that I think takes away from it is it tries to go in a few too many directions, and I get the central focus of it, but at times the movie doesn't seem to understand what it wants to be. It focuses on Jasmine for a bit. It has various chapter breaks and titles that I will go into, uh, you know, as I go throughout this review. And Amber Gray also plays a very good character with a good backstory. The thing about it is, is this movie at times is a little bit unfocused. And the whole supernatural element at times is put in the forefront and then taken back. And then we focus on this and then we focus on that. And it... it is simultaneously too busy and also a little bit too stretched out, if that makes any sense. I think this almost would have been better, <laughs> and I've said this in other reviews, and this is not a knock, I, and I'm sure the director did the best she could, and hopefully she gets to do more stuff. She's done uh, she did a few TV episodes for a show that I don't recall right now, and also a few shorts. Everybody has to start somewhere. There are elements of a decent movie here, but it's kind of buried among a bunch of, like, kind of pseudo chaos because at times <clears throat> there's some you know a bit of chilling stuff here and regina hall delivers a pretty damn good performance as you would expect and zoe renee uh turns in a good performance here in probably one of her breakout roles and there are a few you know there are a few other roommates there was um ella hunt who was in uh anna versus the apocalypse or anna and the apocalypse she was in she was in that and she was in a few other movies where she's played, you know, a pretty good supporting to leading woman. There's good casting here. There's some good, you know, there's some good layering to the casting. They just have to kind of fight and get out of this, you know, kind of this muck and this quagmire giggity of a story that probably need a bit more of a central focus. So the story such as it is, Jasmine Moore <coughs> is a student and she is in a room along with her roommate, uh, Amelia, Talia Ryder, where it turns out somebody died. There's a backstory about uh, witch trial Margaret Millette, who, you know, she was put on trial for witchcraft, and that was like sometime in the 1600s. And other women, other young women have died in that room. Specifically, there was somebody that died in 1968. I'll get into that here in a little, and probably in spoilers. But there's a backstory about that, and okay, is this ghostly? Is there, you know, <clears throat> is this Northeastern University just full of racists that want to target any African American students and then just make it look like an accident? The mystery isn't the problem. The problem is the payoff comes when the movie stumbles over its own goddamn feet and eventually just trips and kind of, you know, lays there in a pile at the end. Again, good performances. In a movie that just kind of was just 
ultimately there. It doesn't really solve anything. Any of the good ideas just kind of get pushed to the side and we just kind of end and we just kind of go off and we just kind of do this. I understood what they were trying to accomplish. I don't know if the movie ended up accomplishing that, at least not for me and maybe not for others. And maybe you guys enjoyed it more than I did. Again, there were good ideas here. I just don't feel that the movie pulled them off as well as it could or well as it should have. But that being said, I've seen worse, and if you have Amazon Prime, there are certainly worse ways to spend your time. Like, it's not a terrible movie. It just ultimately kind of, it, it starts here and then just kind of ultimately goes back. It kind of just ends up kind of in the same place and not really accomplishing much of anything. Some of the emotional punch, I don't know. There, there, were, there were a few things with, like, um, <coughs> Zoe Renee's character that I thought was pretty good, having to prove herself, you know, and, like, not shark-infested waters, but, like, maybe where she felt she was being put upon when she was a smart student. There could have been mental health stuff about it as well, which wasn't really fully explored. It was kind of just briefly touched on, a little bit of dialogue. Again, the movie seemed a little bit too busy, and I don't think accomplished what it could have accomplished with a bit more of a focus. Why is this character over here? Why are we suddenly up in this attic? What What is going on with this stuff? Oh, we're going to go over here. Oh, no, we're just going to go back here. I think that the movie just needed, it just needed more focus. That's really what it was. So now I'm going to get into spoilers, but it is on Amazon Prime. So you can absolutely check it out if you want to. But anyway, <clears throat> we're going to get into spoilers. Three, two, one, spoilers. Okay, so... Regina Hall's character basically is kind of feels like she's, you know, maybe being watched a little bit too closely by the very white uh, faculty staff. But she's the ma the housemaster, are you the housekeeper? And she has her friend Liv, played by Amber Gray. And they have a good they have a good rapport with each other. Uh, Gail wants to do right and help out Jasmine. Liv is a teacher who is a little bit critical of her. <clears throat> That's also not really touched on. Like, they talk about this stuff and then they kind of just forget about it. And there's these, you know, chapter breaks. Like, you know, can someone clean that up, please? Jasmine doesn't quite fit in, but she has a she has an okay rapport with her, you know, white roommates. And then ends up kissing one of the guys a little bit later that, uh, that Amelia is interested in. Okay. <clears throat> and... We get, basically they say, oh, there's all this stuff caused by this witch. That may or may not be true, but again, you either need to go, you can go with a racism aspect and you can go with the supernatural aspect and you can make those things work. This movie didn't do that. It didn't ultimately do it like it should have. Um, there were, there were a few party scenes because of course college, what are you going to expect? Chapter two, I hate you. It turns out that there were more racist attacks and more stuff that was happening. Um, just because you see something doesn't mean it's not there. Liv has a discussion with Jasmine, and then Jasmine investigates what happened in room 302. There was Louisa, uh, you know, Wex. I believe that's what the name was. Um, she was found hung. Was it a hate crime? Was it the ghost? What was it? And um, then <clears throat> there's another side plot. Should Liv be tenured? Should she get tenure? And, you know, be an African-American woman accepted in Northeastern University and get a full-time job. And then there's more excessive drinking, because why the fuck wouldn't there be? Chapter 3, that's what's coming. And the end of Chapter 2 was Amelia basically telling um, Jasmine that she hated her. Because Jasmine has nightmares and has all this stuff and everything. And the noose and uh, the lettering of leave was like, you know, like leave, not leave, like make a tree and get out of here, not from Back to the Future, but leave, you know, get the hell out of here. You don't belong here. Um. Also, uh, Gail keeps finding maggots in places, in drawers and <clears throat> paintings, and she finds, you know, and she finds like, you know, this attic area with a bunch of bells and everything, and... Also, the, a photo of a white family that seemingly was keeping a woman there. Could have been Louisa, you know, Louisa could have been somebody else. Some of these things aren't exactly explored. It's like the movie had all these ideas, threw them into a pot, and then said, okay, let's add natural racism, supernatural, and we'll just do that. So, there's also this um, Puritan community that they seem to be just Puritan cosplayers. 
They pop up occasionally for some reason, and <clears throat> that's during chapter three. <clears throat> and, and it turns out, okay, you know, all this weird stuff's happening. You know, Regina, uh, Regina Hall and Amber Gray continue to, like, discuss stuff and everything. And then during Chapter 4, now more than ever. And that doesn't last very long. <clears throat> it There's now a, you know, a, an Anna Castro as a university to, um, you know, an alliance to promote diversity. We're going to promote diversity, except we can't handle our black students having, you know, various issues. Meanwhile, Jasmine's continuing to investigate the stuff and having issues. We have a Thanksgiving trip <clears throat> um, planned, and that ends up going tits up because Amelia just says, no, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm getting out of here. I don't stop. I'm not going to do this anymore. And then oh, chapter five, it's everywhere. What's everywhere? Supernatural stuff? Racism? Maybe it's the fact that the story is spread out all over the map. Am I beating the sarcasm drum a bit too hard? Um, she gets invited to a house about diversity and stuff like that, and she's talking to her roommates. And then, of course, there was this windstorm that decided to suddenly start in the ag because Regina Hall is being haunted by stuff. Gail sees some ghosts, or maybe doesn't. Maybe she's going insane. And the last call of the library's close was a line that made me laugh. It's like, is, is this a prison? What the hell? Lights out, bitches! <clears throat> so... To avoid, basically, there's these journal entries as well that Gail's seen while this stuff plays out with Jasmine. And Jasmine sees, oh, she's coming, she's going to hang me and everything. And it was 3 3 3, you know, 3.33 uh, a.m. She will take me with her. So she decides to avoid the ghost. She's going to get out on, you know, an icy roof. And icy roof skating never really took off as an Olympic sport. And <clears throat> she's in the, she's, you know, she fell off the roof and she ended up in the hospital. Gail tells her it's not supernatural, it's racism. And then Jasmine gets asked to <coughs> ask for help. And it's this old white woman that probably was the same woman that, you know, the ghost of the woman that, you know, had the hired help up in the attic that had all the bells and stuff like that. So Gail talks to Jasmine, <coughs> or wants to go talk to Jasmine. Jasmine breaks out of the hospital seemingly by this point, and Jasmine's left hanging suddenly, just suddenly, out of nowhere. I failed her! She's saying, because I'm not going anywhere. Except she ends up going somewhere by the end of this. This is where the wheels came off the goddamn wagon here. And this Puritan, this woman um, talks to her and says, I've been trying to call you for weeks. It's about my daughter, Elizabeth. You may know her as Liv. This is a white, uh, this is a picture of a white girl. Oh, she's pretending to be black. Or Rachel Dozell. I think that's how that name was pronounced. Oh boy, we're getting that situation. Or maybe the white woman's lying. Maybe the white woman was ashamed of the fact that her that she had a kid with a black man. I don't really know. And I'm not sure the movie did either. So, she presents her with that. And then Gail goes to confront Liv at a party with all the white people. And the fact she got tenure and all the celebration. She accuses her of all this stuff. The racism in this room is too damn high. Don't antagonize them. I'm not the master, I'm the maid, you brought me here to clean up, I failed, I failed Jasmine, I failed her, and all this stuff, and then she decides to just leave, she leaves, she says, I'm not gonna do this anymore. The movie, again, had good ideas, there were good scenes, it had good performances, it just felt like the movie was messy. See, I, and I may get critiqued for that, and I don't really care, but <laughs> see... It was what it was. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland. I'll see you soon.